Hello ethical hackers. In this video, we will discover the top most popular extensions for Burp Suit Pro. We will start with ActiveScan++, then we will go to HTTP Request Smuggler. We've already seen Logger++ in the previous video, and finally we will see Retire.js. So as you can see, I've sorted the extensions by popularity. And in the previous video, when I talked about the topmost extensions for Burp 3, I mentioned ActiveScan++, which adds some security tests to the Burp scanner. So let's first install it. To do that, you need to download Jython, and then import the jar file here. So let's go to the main website then head to download, and we want the standalone version since we don't want to install anything on our machine. And then add it. Now, if we go back to Burp App Store, you should see the button change to install. You can go to the extensions tab and select ActiveScan++, and you can see that the output here says that it was installed or loaded successfully, and we have no errors. ActiveScan++ integrates into the Burp Suit Scanner engine, so it's really transparent for you. All you have to do is just start scanning your assets. So let's do that. We're going to use this time WebGoat, which is a vulnerable web application I mainly use to demonstrate security issues as it contains the OWASP Top 10. You can find a whole playlist about the OWASP Top 10 in this channel, so make sure to learn from it if you are new to web application security. So let's go ahead, for example, to SQL Injection Advanced, and then maybe choose the third challenge. So in this case, we want to extract the data from the data table by injecting either in the name or the password field. So let's use our burp suit to capture the requests using Foxy Proxy. If you don't know what Foxy Proxy is or how to configure it, make sure to check out the OWASP Top 10 playlist available in the channel. So here we're going to use a dummy name and password. And let's send this. If we go to the proxy, we will see that we have two post requests here and here. And let me just go get rid of those noisy requests. So I'm just going to add this to the scope. I will just copy the host header and then go to target, scope, use advanced scope, and then add it to the host. From here, I just want to remove those noisy requests by just remove them from the scope and go to the filter and show only in scope items. I still have some noisy requests, and I'm just left with the two requests that I'm interested in. All right, so the first one is sending the user ID. So let's right click and do active scan. Actually, there's another way which is more efficient if I want to just target this parameter here. And this is possible if you send that request to the intruder. I can clear all the placeholders and then select just my user ID parameter and then right click and scan defined insertion points. It will prompt me with a configuration for my scan. I'm just going to let this run with the defaults. You will see that nothing happens but if you go to the dashboard you can notice that there is a task running here. So with ActiveScan++, tests are integrated into the default Burp Suit Scanner. And if we're lucky, we should hopefully get a SQL injection vulnerability. So there you have it. So if I go to the advisory and hit Compare Responses, I should see a list of all the users exfiltrated here compared to an empty result which I get here. So this is the response number one, and this is response number two. So let's go ahead and see what was the payload. For the first response, let me just uncheck this pretty, which contained pretty much all the user data. 
Burp used a test that returns true because 3069 is always equals to 3069, whereas in the request to, the comparison returns false. And that indicates that this is a blind SQL injection. So this is normally how you would use this extension. It's really nothing fancy, but you do see that you have some advanced tests which are carried out. The second extension is HTTP Request Smuggler. And we've talked about this extension in the previous video, but we didn't see its result because the results are normally shown in the scans result like we see here. So let's install it like we did before. And let's test it on Bortswigger Academy. If you recall from the previous video, we wanted to test this vulnerability against the lab provided by Bortswigger Academy. So let's access the lab once again, and let's view our post, and then maybe send a comment. Okay, so if we show all the elements, we should see a post request to this host. So let's add it to the scope. and then show only in scope items. So the way to use that, as we saw in the previous video, is to just right click and then launch Smuggle Pro. Make sure that you have Turbo Intruder installed. So if you go to Extender, Extensions, and then Turbo Intruder, um, sorry, HTTP Request Smuggler, you should see the output here. So it says that it has loaded HTTP Request Smuggler and then one attack is queued. After some time, there is a positive test that hints that there is a vulnerability based on content length transferring code order, meaning that the proxy evaluates content length while the backend evaluates transfer encoding HTTP header. And it took time because this extension tries to measure the response delay to see if there is a vulnerability or not. So likewise here, we have a second positive hit using always the same order of HTTP headers. If you go to dashboard, you should see that these two positive hits are shown here, and the details are explained in this paragraph. We can verify or attack this endpoint by choosing smuggle attack and the right order of the headers. In this case, content length and then transfer encoding. And this will pop up a new screen, which will allow us to modify a Turbo Intruder script, which will serve as our proof of concept. In this case, we're trying to smuggle this request right here to validate that we can indeed insert our malicious requests. So because we are sending a slash hopefully 404, we should see a request returning 404 not found. So let's attack. There you see it. We've been able to smuggle our arbitrary page and whenever another user tries to comment, he or she gets a 404 response corresponding to our smuggled request. So this is usually how you provide a proof of concept to validate your Claims. If you want to increase the impact, you can go further than that and demonstrate things like exfiltrating other users' data. The fact that you will exploit other users, this can become problematic from a confidentiality perspective. All right, let's move on to retire.js. We've already seen Logger++ in the previous video. This is a free extension, but this one requires pro extension as active scan plus plus and request smuggler so let's install it and what it does is passively verify the versions of the javascript libraries that you're using if there is an outdated version of jquery for example it will be flagged so let's try to browse our webgoat instance make sure you are proxying through burp let's refresh the page to try to collect the JavaScript files. So we have some JavaScript files here. If we can sort the MIME type and we have here some JavaScript. Let's also go to this blog and see if there are any outdated JavaScript libraries. 
let's see in juice shop and there you have it we have two mentions for jQuery it tried to get the slash profile and then got a response referencing a script which points to a version of jQuery which seems to be vulnerable. In the advisory you can read more about the details. I should mention that you must never report this as is, meaning that this has not a real impact and you have to val validate that you can exploit any vulnerability mentioned in this version with a clear impact if you want your bug bounty report to be valid. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and let's see you in the next one. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.